of Jesus? Are you sure you love Jesus? Then why do you love Jesus? Because he first loved me, that's the reason we all love to love him. You know, on this side? This side? How I love Jesus. And all together? Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. I believe there are no other else. No other reason that you are here in this ministry because you love Jesus Christ. And much even more because he first loved us. Shall we bow our heads for prayer? Heavenly Father, as we come to the culmination of testimonies, we are going to our commitment part. And indeed, ministries would never go on without our hands placing on the plow for a commitment. Here we are, dear God. We ask for your Holy Spirit that you may speak to each one of us, even to the speaker, that you alone will be magnified, be amplified, and be glorified. And as we look upon ministry, May it continually help us never the same again. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Open your Bibles to Revelation 2. Revelation 2, verse 10. And we are going to make a a quick review on a certain parable in which I am going to illustrate it in our context. Let us go first in Revelation 2, verse 10. And it plainly speaks to a certain church. And it goes like this in the New King James Version. Whatever version you may have, but it is this is what it go how it goes in the New King James Version. It goes like this. Do not fear anything of those things which you are about to suffer. Indeed. The devil is about to throw some of you into prison that you may be tested and you will have tribulation ten days. Be faithful until death and I will give you the what? The Stephanos. The crown of life. I always love to read the voice translation. It goes like this. Listen carefully. In the face of suffering, Do not fear. Watch. The devil will throw some of you into prison shortly. Praise God. So that you might be tested and you will endure great affliction for 10 days. Be faithful throughout your life until the day you die, even to the last ounce of your your strength. And I will give you, not just the crown of life, it goes like this. And I will give you the victor's rep of life. Amen? That sounds faint, huh? Okay. Is it an amen? Would you really like to have that Stephanos, that crown of life, that victor's rep of life? Okay. <laughs> amen. Amen. Now, in this, in this commitment part, I would like you to go back in a certain parable in the Bible which is found in Matthew 20. Matthew 20 goes with the parable of the workers in the vineyards. Are you familiar with the parable? Of course, you're you're familiar with this one. It goes like this in verse 1. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner, and the name of the landowner is Ron, who went out early in the morning to hire youth for voice of it. Now, when he had agreed with the young people for a certificate a month, he sent them into their fields. I hope that I will not have plagues by doing this. But then just relaying it in our context, okay? 
And he went out, the landowner named Ron, he went out about the third hour. What's, what's that time already? On the ninth hour. By the way, in their time, it usually starts with 6 a.m. So whatever you add to it would be the time. Okay? So plus 3 o'clock or plus 3 is equals to 6 plus 3 is 9. Praise God, we are still good in our math. Okay, on the 9 o'clock, okay, he was able to call. Okay, Howard, I saw you're not doing something. Okay, uh, <laughs> create a group and then I will send you to my team and I will give you a certificate. Okay, okay, sir, we are going to my team. <laughs> and then the next one. Okay, what's the next one? Verse 5, and again, he went out about the 6 hour. That is what time? 12 noon. How well, can you just imagine how, what do you call this one? How industrious the landowner is. And he called for Ron Ronel. Ronel, I see you have some groups there and you're just chit chatting and just doing your own thing there. I'll be sending you to where? To diet. Okay. You will be having your voice of youth there. Okay, sir. Okay, this is your reward. You will have a certificate. Okay, sir. And then, again, he went out about the what? Another one is the 9th hour. That is what already time? 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And he was able to see Monisha. Where is Monisha? Okay. Let's, okay, I, I was not able to see Monisha. So, let's go for Aryan. Aryan, uh, I think you also have your group, right? So, you will be going to Bel Air. You are going to the urban urban uh, mission. So, after that, you will be having a certificate. Okay, sir. We go there. And then, the next one is about the 11 hour. That's already 5 o'clock. Okay? And he was able to see Mon. Okay? He was able to see Mon. And then, he sent them to where? Bansod. Okay. Bansod Mindoro. Okay. Bansod Mindoro. Okay. This, with, this will be the very thing that you are going to do. After a month, you are going to report with me. And then, I will give you your reward. Okay, sir. And then they went. Thinking that Howard was able to live on the, on the third hour... They have much of it. And then the reporting came. Okay, they went to the office. Okay, this is now the end of the month. By the way, in the, translate, in the, in the message, it, in, the, in the context, it goes like this. At the end of the day, it goes like that, right? In the law of Moses, it goes like this. The poor people, when they are having their work, they usually are paid at the end of the day. That is why. That is the context there. So let me put in this context. At the end of the month, they are going to receive their certificates. Ah, oh, it's so tiring to work at my team. And you know very well that there are so many, so many slanders there, so many backsliders there. And it's very, very hard to work on that one. So then they come to the sir to Sir Ron and then reported. Sir. This is our report. So these are our accomplishments. These are the very things that we do. We have that. Okay? Okay, Howard, good job. This is your reward. Uh, only a certificate? We have done so well. We have done very hard. And even through the rain, we went to their houses and then only certificate, but actually that's only in the mind of Howard. Only certificate. What, what am I going to say to Gia, to Hazel, to George, to Grace about this? Okay, thank you so much, sir. And then the next one, okay, another one reported. It's Ronel, okay? Ronel already came, and then these are, the, these are the accomplishments. They went to a certain place in which it's very hard as well. So the same scenario, when he reported... Sir Ron, these are the accomplishments that we have. Okay? 
Wow, so impressive. This is your reward. Certificate. He must be kidding. <laughs> Certificate. We're just almost with the same time with Howard. We must receive some better rewards or incentives. What certificate? Actually, that's also in the mind of Ronel. Okay, thank you, sir. And then the, not, the another one, of course. Wow, on the 12 and the 12 noon also ready that one. Arian from Bel Air. Wow, ang lapit. <laughs> ang lapit lang, no? Ang lapit lang. And then, much favorable because their landowner is just <laughs> close or just within the vicinity. Wow, that's a good news for Arian, huh? That's a good news for us. So they reported, Pastor Ron, Pastor Ron, this is our, this is our accomplishments. And then the same thing, certificate. So Ron, I think you have seen what we have done. And this, this, only, this is the only thing that we are going to receive. And even the fifth one, or the, the fourth one, the last one that came, more when he reported the same thing, certificate in which they also went to a far place. They even crossed ocean. Can you just imagine? Ocean? No, it's just a sea. It's just a sea. They crossed an ocean just to reach out for people. And the same thing is the, the reward that they have. Now, what is, now, in their mind, they have a question. They, we have done a lot of, we have done a lot of things in our ministry, yet these are the only, this is the only reward that we are going to have. But actually, the server will always say, well, actually, that's the very thing that we have talked about. A certificate. Oh, yes, I remember. A certificate. A certificate. Now, don't you know, my fellow young people, I'm still young, in case <laughs> you don't know. Okay, my fellow young people, this is the situation. Of course, you would notice that you have done a lot. Might be some of you here have already done Voice of Youth for nine times, for ten times. Ah, I've already gone through that one. Ah, I'm already, I already mastered Voice of Youth, even I have a major in voice of youth. I am good at voice of youth. I should have a reward better than a certificate. And then you might brag within yourselves. You might brag within yourselves, especially those who are in the fourth year, especially those who are in the third year. They already went to a lot of voice of youth. We have done a lot for God's work. But don't you know, could that be the very thing that would classify the efforts that you have done. There are three things, beloved, that you need to recognize in the story. First one, you would recognize that these young people that have nothing to do in their life. But it's because of the faithfulness of Sir Ron that he has called them for the work. Now, three things I would like you to remember. Three, letter E. First one, we have an enabling master. Going to the metaphor that this landowner is no other than God who has called you in the work. He is an enabling master. Amen? In spite that you have, you have gone through a lot of years for ministry or voice of youth, God is enabling you through it. And even if you went just last month, God is still enabling you through it because we have an enabling master. And he is so faithful to, revo to reward you. Praise God. You still have your reward. Next one. We have an earnest call. Have you noticed? Have you noticed this, beloved? That in spite of your incapabilities, you might not be worthy to be part of this Yet, God still called you. Who among you here can brag that he doesn't need a healing? Who among you here can brag that he doesn't need to be reached out? 
Who among you here can brag that he doesn't need Bible study? Who among you here can brag that your spirituality is already enough for salvation or for eternal life? No one can ever, ever brag on that. But praise be to God, on that earnest call, God has given us the opportunity and the privilege to be co-laborers with Him. Amen? At wala talaga tayong may pagmamayabang. Keep your feet planted on the ground. But this is what I'm going to tell you. In that earnest call, always remember this. Never ever make the ministry an alternative for your personal relationship with God. Usually, you think that when you go to the voice of youth, that would strengthen your relationship with God. No, no, no. Baliktad. It should be that in your relationship with God, it brings you to the ministry, to the voice of youth. And I assure you, you will never be burned out in your ministry because you have your personal relationship with God. But if you just went to voice of youth, yet you don't have personal relationship with God, I I assure you, you are just having a vacation. And after all, in spite of those, when you are invited once more, you will never have the enthusiasm once again because you don't have the relationship with God. So always remember, never ever make your mission, your ministry, your small goods, your passion as an alternative for your personal relationship with God. Boost even more your personal relationship with God and it will always extend to the outskirts of the responsibilities that God has entrusted upon your shoulders. That is the earnest call. Number three, we have an eternal reward. Amen? God is an enabling master. God has given us an earnest call and God will give us an eternal reward. Can you just imagine for those souls that you are able to usher at the feet of Jesus Christ, it costs the blood of Jesus Christ. And it's only for the glory of Jesus Christ. There is once an army, a Marine, I should say, a Marine guy who was able to graduate in a Marine Corps. And then, they are already about to have the rewards. They will be having their badges named or classified as Marine. And then, these two guys, these two Marines, are, are talking to each other. Men, when, you're, when you receive your reward, are you going to cry? <laughs> oh man, that's ridiculous. I'm a Marine. I will not cry. Do, do you really think we are going to cry? I don't, think, I don't think so. I don't think so. So, those are the conversations. Until... Until the captain has already came in front of them. Okay. Lock down. Marine lock down. Wait. Shoot. Person. Arms. And then he will put the badge into your chest, onto your chest. And then you know what? When the captain has given the badge into his chest, he cried a lot. He cried a lot. Why am I crying? He's crying. <laughs> He's crying. The, 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 the other one said, He's crying. Oh, goodness. That could not be. And then, okay, order, arms. Okay, congratulations. Marine, locked down. Okay. Then he went to the next one. Marine, young boy. Then, shoot. And then, even after the attention, the young boy cried a lot. <laughs> Are you kidding me? And then lockdown so oh, you told me you're not crying. So you also cried. You also cried. And then the home guy cried. Okay. Person arms, okay. And then the badge. And then all their arms. Congratulations, Marine, the home guy. You know what? After that, they went to their potluck or to their uh, dinner. To their dinner and then they talk to each other. They have the same question to each other when they already face each other. They don't go like that. They don't go like that. Why did you cry? Uh, okay, like has its reason. 
the Hongoy has reason. But actually, the Hongoy was able to say, you know what, Lakdao? When the captain is in front of me, there are so many things that went into my mind. I just remember the night in which I hope I didn't enter the Marine Corps. There are these times in which in the toughest, in the toughest hours of our, of our training, even to the high noontide, it is very hot and it's very hard. I can remember all those things that it's very tough and it's very hard to go through the, the training and I about to give up thinking I, I, I just wish I didn't enter in. And even I remember those nights in which my family, I remember my family in which far away from me. I remember those times in which those pains that I'm going through in that training, I remember those times that is the very thing that made me cry. You know what the good news, my dear brothers and sisters? When we go to heaven, we will not just be receiving a badge. But you know what this is the good news? When we go into heaven, all of us will be falling in line. And then Captain Jesus Christ will go in front of you, saluting you. But it is not with a badge anymore. But it is with a crown be given to you. And even before you receive the crown, of course you will remember those times in your life. I just wish I did not enter the ministry. It's so hard. I just wish I did not come to my team. It's so hard. I just wish I did not come to diet. They always rejected us. I just wish. And you will be filled with a lot of fears. Remembering what happened in your life. I just, I just remember those times that I fall. Those times that I struggle. Those pains that I went through in my life. Those would be the remembrance in your mind. As receiving the crown of life in front of Jesus Christ. And receiving that crown, receiving that crown, you will just thank God. And you know what? It would be very quick. It would be very quick because all of us will receive its crown and it will just be very quick. We cannot take it on, our, on ourselves, but rather we will all cast those crowns at the feet of Jesus Christ. Lord, you are worthy of this. And then we will just enjoy the eternal reward of the enabling master through the earnest call. Never get tired of your ministry. Even those times that you've been rejected, never get tired because in heaven you will receive your crown. And much even more, a bonus to that, stars in your crown. Will there be any stars? Any stars in my crown? Can you continue? Will there be any sorrows in my crown? And you will just remember, Lord, I don't deserve this star. But it's because through you that I was able to receive the stars in my crown. And then we will all rejoice together. Ah, you know. That's your me, that's your experience in that. That's your experience in Bansu, that's your experience in what more place that you have? Do not get tired of the ministry, young people. God is about to come. And you know what? In its due time, in the fullness of time, those seeds that you are able to plant in the hearts of those people will be harvested in its right time. And they will just go on to the gospel. They will just go on to the name of Jesus Christ, receiving him as their personal savior. One last story that I will be sharing to you, then I will sit down for the field song. In a community, in a commun communist country, there's a certain minister. Who hide or hid or hid his name 
by the name of George. And then a certain Russian army, or Russian captain, went to his house, wanted to test this minister. Now, he was alone with the minister. Can you give me a place in which we could talk alone? And then the minister led him to the conference room. While going to the conference room, he, they were able, he was able to see a cross on the wall. And then the minister nodded. And then this Russian captain says, That is not true. Admit to me that Jesus Christ is not the Son of God. Oh no, I could not do that. Because I believe it's true. He is the Son of God. Many, many people has just ridiculed a lot, ridic ridiculed a lot of people telling that He is indeed the Son of God. Much even more with the poor, pe poor people. Just brainwashing them to tell them that He is the Son of God. Admit to me now that He is not the Son of God. And then he smiled, the minister smiled. No, of course, young man, I could not do that. Because Jesus Christ is real. And then you know what? The Russian captain says, do not play a trick with me. Don't even put that grin or smile with me. I am serious with this. Tell me it is not true. He is not the son of God. And then he, he, pu he pushed closely. He pushed closely and then the revolver went closely to the body of the minister. Tell me now, unless you admit that he is not the son of God, I'll fire you. I'm sorry, but whatever you may do, I could not deny that Jesus is the Son of God. And then, the captain just cried. He let down his revolver. And then he embraced the minister so many times. I have heard a lot of people saying that they will die for Christ. Yet, in the time of testings, testing, they were not able to die for Christ. And it's only now, and it's only now that I was able to see one that is willing to die for Christ. And now, I tell you this, I would like to be one of them who would be willing to die for Christ. Amen? And that has been the conversion of this Russian captain. Now, young people, do you really believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? This is the very thing that we are professing. Do you really believe? Are you accepting Him as your personal Lord and Savior? It is now high time for you to receive Him in your life. Because you might be going in the ministry, but you did, did not accept Him as your personal Lord and Savior. It will make your ministry in vain. Accept Him now. Accept Him now. And I assure you, the true success of your ministry is through the name of Jesus Christ. Now I call you. If there anyone here, while we'll be hearing the song, if there be anyone here who would like to commit that is willing to die for Christ, wherever he may go in the voice of you, I call you in front. I call you in front. Do not go with anybody else. Just go alone. It is your personal relationship with God. It's your personal response with God. I call you now. Whoever here, who among you here is willing to die for Christ, even to the last ounce of strength, they will be faithful even unto death. I call you now. Come in front and I will offer you a special prayer. Thank you so much. God bless you. I hope that you will not just stand as many of those who have told that they will die for Christ, yet in their testing times, they could not. But right now, God is pleased if you are doing this wholeheartedly. If you are doing this wholeheartedly, wherever you are, if this is your plea for Christ, stand up. Much even more right now. 
if you are willing to do so. Kneel down with me as we pray for the Lord in this commitment. Heavenly Father, yes, we get so much tired with this work, thinking that it's all by our might, might or strength. But we just fail because never of this, none of this are the reasons or even the source of the success of our ministry. Father God in heaven, so many of us here are willing to die for you even giving their last ounce of strength to give it for you. Dear God, I pray that you may bless them. I know, dear God, that the enemy will make them the first target. You, my friend, all of you, my friend, who have knelt down, I assure you that even after this commitment, Satan will speak to your mind with very tough temptations. Overcome it by the blood of Jesus Christ and overcome it through the Holy Spirit. Many of you here, I believe, is struggling in their relationship. Struggling in their family, struggling with their life. Even so, even so, God is calling you still for His work. Do not take it as a hindrance for you. Take it as a stepping stone, much even more, a great motivation that you know that these are just the delusions of the enemy in proclaiming the good news, in finishing the work of God here on earth. I pray that you may continue to stand firm, to continue to be steadfast unto the end, to be ardent, to be resolute, to, to escalate in your relationship and to emerge just for God's glory. And now, as we seal this commitment, I pray, continually pray, that you may remain faithful unto the end. And indeed, Jesus Christ will give you the crown of life. And now, for every one of us, it is my prayer that may God give us a special blessings. The special, the special blessings of His commission that as we go out, wherever we may be, might be eating at cafeteria, walking on the street, sitting on our class, going to the church, sleeping on the dormitory, even talking to your friends at the lobby, wherever you may be, remember that these are the fields of our lives. And this will always be the mission field to proclaim the good news, to proclaim God's goodness, and much even more to testify of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And for all these things, dear loving Father, I pray that you may strengthen us. Give us continually the courage to carry on in spite of the hurdles and the hardship of life. And much even more, dear God, it is my prayer that through the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, through the working of the Holy Spirit, it may it help us to continually be faithful, being ready, and getting ready for your soon return. And all together, We'll make this wonderful time together with Him, meeting Him face to face. This Lord have been the privileges that we have. And then we will hear Him say, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Enter now to the joy of the Lord. This is my prayer, that may our names remain in the book of life. And forever and ever may God be glorified in our lips and in our lives. This is all I pray in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ who have been crucified, risen, and soon coming for all of us. Let everyone say, Amen. Amen. Amen.